Question number one, determine whether each of the following functions has an inverse function. So I have a note for you here. If a function is a one-to-one -one function, then the function will have an inverse function. So from question A to G here, you need to determine whether the functions given is a one-to-one -one function or not. If it is a yes, then the functions will have an inverse function. So let us move to question A. So the functions f here maps x to 2 plus 6 over x. So based on an error diagram here, each object only maps to one Im image. So therefore, this is a one-to-one -one function. So this functions f here definitely will have an inverse function. So I put a tick here to indicate this function has an inverse function. Now look to question B. The function g here maps x to x squared minus 3. So based on the diagram here, this number 13 is mapped by 2 of object. Therefore, this function g is a many to one function. So this function g here does not have an inverse function. Now let us move to question C. So this is given in the form of graph. So you can use the horizontal line test to determine whether these functions have an inverse function or not. So draw a horizontal line. If the horizontal lines cut more than one point on the graph, just like we have in this question C here, then these functions will not has, have an inverse function. If the horizontal lines only cut one point on the graph, then the functions will have an inverse function. Now let us move to question D. So this is what we call as the order pairs. So the first number given here, which I highlight using the green color here, is the object. And the one that I highlight using the yellow color here will be the image. So number one is mapped to two, four is mapped to five, five is mapped to eight, nine is mapped to nine. So each of the object only maps to one image. Therefore, for the question D, this function is a one-to-one -one function. So this question D, this function will also has an inverse function. So for questions E, this is also the order pairs. So negative 3, negative 1, 2, 5, and 9 is the object. And 2, 1, 4, 4, 5 here is the image. So based on these two pairs here, this number 2 is mapped to 4. This number 5 is also mapped to 4. Therefore, this is a many to one function. So these functions will not does not have an inverse function. Now move to questions f. So f maps x to 4 minus x squared. So now based on this x square here, we know that this is a quadratic function. So a quadratic function is a many to one function. Therefore, this function does not have an inverse function. Now let us move to G. So F maps X to 1 over X minus 2 squared. So this X greater than 2 here is the domain of, of this function. So if you draw the graph for this function, all right, so if you draw the graph, so this is our X. So here is our fx. So here, let's say, is number 2 is here. You will have a graph like this. So if you do a horizontal line test, just like the question C, it will only cut at one point on the graph. Therefore, these functions will have an inverse function. Question number two, are the following functions f and g the inverse functions of each other? So verify the truth by applying the relations fg equal to gf equal to x. So if the composite functions of the fg and gf for these functions f and g is equal to x, then they are the inverse functions of each other. So for the questions a, first we are going to determine the composite function of fg. So you are inserting the function g into the functions f. 
So the function g is the x plus 2 over 3 here. So this is the one that you're going to insert into the x in our functions, f. So next, 3 bracket x plus 2 over 3 minus 2. So when you multiply these two together, this number 3 here, you can cancel it. So next, you're going to have x plus 2 minus 2. So 2 minus 2 is 0. Then finally, you're going to have the answer of x. Next, we're going to do for the composite functions of gf. So the f that we have here is the 3x minus 2. So this is the one that we're going to insert into the x in our functions g. So you're going to have 3x minus 2 plus 2 over 3. So if you solve this negative 2 plus 2 here, this is equal to 0. So next you have to have 3x over 3. So this 3 we can simplify it. So finally you're going to have the answer of x. So look at the answer here. So the composite function of gf is x and fg is also x. Therefore, this function g, this function f, and then this function g, they are the inverse functions of each other. So now we want to move to questions b. So we're going to uh, use the same methods as a here. So first find the composite functions of fg. So our g is here is 3x over x minus 2. So this is the one that we're going to insert into the x in our functions, f. So you're going to have 2 bracket 3x over x minus 2 over 3x x minus 2 minus 3 here. So let us solve for the numerator parts here. So when I multiply it, so I'm going to have 6x over x minus 2. So this is a fractions here. So a fractions is mean divide. So I can write it like this. So for the denominator part, if I want to combine them as a single fraction, so number 3 here is actually 3 over 1. So I need to equalize the denominator. So I'm going to multiply both of them with x minus 2 here. So next you want to have 3x minus 3 bracket x minus 2 over x minus 2. So I can combine them, combine together now as they are having the same uh, denominator. So next, so this divide can be changed to multiplication. So this one will be flipped over. So this part here is the expansions part. So you're going to have 3x minus 3x plus 6. All right. Now, this x minus 2, x minus 2, I can cancel it. 3x minus 3x is equal to 0. So next, we are going to have 6x over 6. So simplify this. So finally, you have the answer of x. Now, we're going to move to the other one, which is the composite functions of gf. So our functions f is 2x over x minus 3. All right, so this is the one that we're going to insert into the x in our functions g. So you're going to have 3 brackets over, so this is just 2x, x minus 3, minus minus 2 here, sorry. So first, let us solve for the numerator. So if I multiply it, I'm going to have 6x over x minus 3. So this is a fraction, so this is a divide. So when you want to combine the denom denominator part as one single fractions, so you need to equalize the denominator. So I'm going to have 2x 
minus 2 bracket x minus 3 over x minus 3. So I can change this operation to multiplication. So this one will be uh, flip over. So this part is the expansion. So I'm going to have 2x minus 2x plus 3 plus 6. 2 times 3 is 6 there. So from here, this x minus 3, I can cancel it. 2x minus 2x is 0. So okay so i have forgot the x here so next you're going to have 6x over 6 so simplify this you will have x as well so look at the answer of the fg which is x and the gf is also x so therefore this functions f and then this function g they are the inverse functions of each other c so we're going to do the same process here. So first, let us find the composite functions of fg. So here the g is the 3x minus 2 over x. So this is the one that we're going to insert into the x in our functions, f. So next, you're going to have 2 over 3x minus 2 over x minus 3. So this is the same as 2 divide by this, right? So I can combine this as a single fraction. So number 3 is 3 over 1. So I need to equalize the denominator by multiplying it with x. So I'm going to have 3x minus 2 minus 3x over x so i can change this to multi uh, multiplications so this one will become x over now for this part here this is 3x minus 3x this will be 0 so what is left there is going to be a negative 2 next this 2 and then this negative 2 i can simplify it so finally, what you're going to get is negative x. Now, look at these relations. So for the functions f and g to be the inverse functions of each other, the composite functions fg and the gf, the answer must be an x, right? Now, the answer here is not an x. It is negative x. So it's already didn't fulfill the relations of this fg and gf which is equal to x therefore we can do a conclusion that these functions f and then this function g they are not the inverse functions of each other so there is no need for me to continue to do for the gf anymore because the fg already not equal to x now, next, we are going to do for the D. So, first, I'm going to do the composite functions of FG. So, here, the G is the X minus 5 over 2. So, this is the one that we're going to insert into the X in our functions F here. So, you're going to have 2 plus 5. Alright, so next, so we're going to multiply this. So what you're going to get next is, so 5x minus 25 over 2, right? So if I want to combine this as a single fraction, remember, I need to equalize the denominator. So I need to multiply this by 2. So next, you're going to have, this one will give you the answer of 4 plus 5x minus 25 over 2. So if you solve for the numbers here, yeah, 4 minus uh, 25 is, is a negative 21, right? So you're going to have 5x minus 21 over 2. 
So there you have it for the FG. Now, the answer that you have here is not an X. So therefore, it didn't fulfill this relation. So for the questions D, the functions F and the function G, they are not the inverse functions of each other. Question number three, the functions f is defined as f maps x to x cubed for the domain x is greater or equal to negative one or less than or equal to two. So on the same plan, sketch the graph of f and the inverse of f. Hence that the domains and range of the inverse of f. So the questions here, the functions f of x is equal to x cubed. And we want to plot the graph using these domains given. So on the first row, I'm going to put in the value of x and the second row, the value of the f x. So the x is in between negative 1, 0, 1 to 2. So to find the value of f x, I'm going to substitute the value of the x here with the value of negative 1. So negative 1 cube is negative 1, 0 cube is 0, 1 cube is 1, and 2 cube is going to be x. So this is the points that I'm going to plot on the graph that I have here. Now, I already plotted the lines y equal to x here because the graph of the inverse of f is a reflection of the graph of f at the lines y equal to x. So first, the points negative 1, negative 1 is here. 0, 0 is the origin here. 1, 1 is here. And the fourth point, 2, x is here. So this is a cubic function. So after you plot the graph, you have something like this. All right, so this is the graph of F. Now we want to sketch the inverse of F. So look at the points negative 1, negative 1, 0, 0, and 1, 1 here. This three point is on the lines y equal to x. So after the reflections, this three point will still remain at the same positions. So therefore, negative 1, negative 1 is still going to be here, 0, 0, and 1, 1. And for our fourth point with the coordinates of 2 x, so after it's being reflected at the lines y equal to x, it will be here at the coordinates of x2. So let us plot the graph of the inverse of f. Remember, this is the reflections of the f at the lines y equal to x. So, so this blue line here is our graph of the inverse of f. Now, next, we want to find the domains of the inverse of f. The domain is referred to the value of the x here. So, first look at here, the blue color graph here. So the value of x is in between negative 1 to x. So this is our domain. So therefore, the domains of the inverse of f, so this is x in between negative 1 and x. And for the range of the inverse of f, it is the value of the fx. So, the highest points for the inverse of f is 2, and the, and the lowest point is at negative 1. So, this is our range for the inverse of f. So, therefore, the inverse of f will have the range in between negative 1 and 2. Question number four, the function hash is defined as hash of x equal to x squared minus two for the domains x is greater or equal to zero and less than or equal to three. So A on the same diagram, sketch the graph of hash and the inverse of hash. So we have the function hash of x is equal to x squared minus two. So we're going to draw the graph uh, using the domains that is given here. So for the first row, I'm going to put in the value of x. And for the second row, I'm going to put in the value of 
the hash x. So the domain is from 0 to 3, so the x is 0, 1, 2, 3. To find the hash x, I'm going to substitute the value of x into the x that we have at the function hash here. So when I input 0 here, you're going to have 0 squared minus 2, which is negative 2. So when I put in 1 here, 1 squared minus 2, it will give you the answer of negative 1. So when I put in 2 squared, which is 4 minus 2, then you're going to have 2 as your answer. 3 squared is 9, minus 2 you're going to have 7 as your answer. Now you already have the points here, so now we can plot the graph. So first is the points of 0, negative 2, which is here. 1, negative 1 is here, and 2, 2 is here. Last one is 3, 7. So this is a quadratic function, so this one is not a straight line, so this one is a curve. So, so this is the graph of the H. Now we want to sketch the inverse of H. So this is the lines of y equal to x, so the inverse of H will be reflected at the lines of y equal to x here. So when the point 0, negative 2 reflected on the lines y equal to x, then it will become here, which is negative 2, 0. So when 1, negative 1, this point is reflected on the lines y equal to x, then it will be here with the coordinates negative 1, 1. So this point 2, 2 is on the lines y equal to x, so when it's reflected, it will still remain here. So it's still, still going to be 2, 2. And for the points 3, 7, so when it's reflected on the lines y equal to x, then it will be here with the coordinates of 7, 3. So now we want to plot the graph. So this is the graph of the inverse of H. Next, we're going to find the domain of the inverse of H. So the domains here is referred to the value of X. So from the graph here, if you look at the blue lines that we have here, so the value of x for the inverse of h is from negative 2 to 7. So therefore, the domains of the inverse of h, the x is greater or equal to negative 2, but less than or equal to 7. Now we're going to move to the last question c. Find the value of x such that h of x is equal to the inverse h of x. So this question means, what is the value of x when you insert into the function h and the inverse of h? It, it is going to give you the same answer. Now, let us do an arrow diagram for this part so that you can see this clearly. Alright, so this is our function h. And this is going to be our inverse of h. So from the points here, given, so when you put in 0 into the h, it's going to give you the answer of negative 2. And if you put in 1, then you're going to get negative 1. So when you put in 2, you get, neg you get number 2. And when you put in 3, then you're going to get Sevens. So, therefore, the h of 0 is equal to negative 2. So, when you inverse it, the inverse h of negative 2, then it will be equal to 0. The h of 1 will give you the answer of negative 1. 
So the inverse of negative 1 will give you the answer of 1. The hash of 2 will give you the answer of 2. And the inverse hash of 2 will give you the answer of 2 as well. Now, the input for the hash and the input for the inverse of hash both are the same which is 2 and both of them are going to give you the same answer which is number 2 therefore the value of x to fulfill these conditions will be x equal to 2 question number 5 the coordinates of the following point line on the graph of 1 to 1 functions f Determine the corresponding coordinates lines on the graph of the inverse of f. So before we solve these questions a, b, c, d, let's look at the example that I have here. Let's say the points a, b, c are the points on the graph of the function f. So, so the inverse of f are the graph that is being reflected on the lines y equal to x. So when these points A being reflected at the point at the lines y equal to x, A will be reflected here. So this will be the image of A. Now the coordinate will be 5, 2. This point B, so when it's being reflected on the lines y equal to x, they will be reflected here. So this is the image of B with the coordinates of two negative ones and then this point c after being reflected on the line y equal to x it will become here so the image of c here have the coordinates of negative two negative four now look at the coordinates of the a and the image of a two five become five two and for b negative one two become two negative ones and the c negative four negative two become negative two negative four so therefore, we can make a conclusion that the corresponding coordinates lines on the graph of the inverse of f, they are in reverse order of the coordinates that is lines on the graph of f. So for this question A here, so when this P is being reflected on the lines y equal to x, so the image of P will have the coordinates of 1 over 2, negative 2. And for this Q, we have the coordinates of negative 3, 1. And this R, after being reflected, it will have the coordinates of 5, 4. And for this S, after being reflected, it will have the coordinates of negative 8, negative 6. Question 6. So the diagram on the right show the lines y equal to x and the graph of y equal to f for the domain x is greater or equal to negative 1 and less than or equal to 3. So the points a, b, c lines on the graph. So a sketch the graph of y equal to inverse of f that show the points on the graph of y equal to the inverse of x. f corresponding to the points a, b. So the graph of the inverse of f is the reflections on the lines y equal to x. Therefore, when this a is being reflected on the lines y equal to x, the image of a will have the coordinates of 2, negative 1. And for this b, after being reflected, the image of b will have the coordinates of 10, 3. So the shape of the inverse of f is the graph of f being reflected on the lines y equal to x so it will look like this so this is the graph of y equal to the inverse of x now look at questions b find the value of a and b if the corresponding coordinates on the graph y equal to the inverse of x f are 4 1 so this point 4 1 are the points of the image of the point P. So if the coordinates of P is AB, then the image of P is BA. So the coordinates are 4, 1. Therefore, the value of A is equal to 1 
and the value of b is equal to 4. 